The very first sentence of the introduction in your book is this, quote, the times ahead will be radically different from those we've experienced in our lifetimes, though similar to many times in history, unquote. Do we see this today in current market prices? And if so, which ones? Um, we certainly see it today in, in market prices and in um, everything that's happening. So um, there are three, sometimes maybe we could stretch that to five, big things that are happening. And they are reflected in market prices and the dynamics behind them and their change will reflect, will be reflected in changes in market prices. And those three, <clears throat> those three big ones are first, that which is happening with money and credit. In other words, when you get close to a zero interest rates and you spend a lot more money than you earn, then the government does that. That means that a lot of money is printed and it moves its way through the system in a way that is reflected in market prices. And so that is what is happening now. The second is the very large internal conflicts that we're having that are <clears throat> due to wealth gaps, political gaps, um, and so on, that influence the left and the right and the dynamic between them that affects tax pro policies, that affects capital flows and the like, and they're reflected in market prices and will at change as those circumstances change. And the third big influence is the rise of a great power, China, to challenge the existing leading power and the existing world order and that is being reflected in market prices, but will be reflected more as those circumstances change. So those are the three big influences to answer your questions that are reflected, maybe not yet adequately, and we have to look ahead of what things will change. The other two are... Um, that have been reflected through history and I didn't have a full appreciation of until I studied the last 500 years of history. Those two are technology and inventiveness changes. We're accelerating the rate at which they are occurring and that adaptability and change is affecting our lives in big ways. So you cannot ignore the technologically and inventiveness changes. And the fifth, are acts of nature. You know, the one thing that was interesting to me when I studied the last 500 years of history is that acts of nature, and they could be um, climate-related, droughts and floods and pandemics, uh, had cost more lives and toppled more civilizations than anything else, including wars. So they are something that comes along ir um, irregularly. You know, when you have the pandemic or the drought or the, that event that comes along once in a hundred years or so, they have had big effects too. So pandemic is a reminder of those. But those are the drivers and they will remain the main drivers. And as they change, prices will continue to change. But if I look today, say, at equities prices, they seem fine. If I look at the 10-year yield for the U.S., it's not crazy high. Should I just assume that these matters are more or less going to work out fine, given those market prices, or are those prices wrong? No. Um, I think you have to look at the dynamic behind those prices, and I think I would look at them a bit differently. Uh, regarding the dynamic behind those prices, it is that we are spending more than we are earning by a lot, individuals and the country as a whole, and that <clears throat> that um, needs, we need money, partially because of the political issues, partially for all the reasons you, that you know. So a lot of debt and debt is being created 
that is also producing the need for a lot of money. And as a result of that, we have very negative real interest rates. Real interest rates of short-term interest rates are significantly negative, and even bond yields, real bond yields, are um, over 100 basis points negative. And so when one looks at the return of owning those bonds, uh, that is a, uh, a very bad return. Um, it, it means that if you save in those assets and you put it away, that you will lose buying power at probably a rate of 3 to 5% per year. We can guess what inflation is and we can talk about that. But you will lose that and that tax on your buying power makes one <clears throat> will not want to be saving in those assets. <clears throat> that it, want, it makes one <clears throat> want to borrow in those assets and the availability of credit, credit and the, that set of circumstances drives money into other assets and into uh, those assets are in, um, investment assets um, as well as goods and services. And so what we see now is that um, stocks are not expensive, uh, not very expensive, maybe a little bit more so than normal, relative to bonds, which are very expensive, but still not expensive in relation to cash. And so they are all having expected returns that are comparatively low, and we have an inflationary period. So it's very important to understand the paradigm that we're in and how that dynamic works. And so as the inflation pressures become an issue and we have relatively, let's say, stronger growth, those things will start to change. And so the big question <clears throat> that the markets look at is how will that change as a result? Uh, will the Federal Reserve and central, central banks begin to tighten monetary policy? Because these things will change. And what will tax policies be and the like? And those things will affect market prices going forward. It's unsustainable. 